Gamer Gamers, this is Simply Travis and... Ready 5000. And recently we've amassed a team of pocket monsters and given them swords and shields to take on the world. But we're still kind of salty that we can't collect them all. But we're also kind of excited that we can catch almost all of them? Almost. Yeah, there was a term for that. I think it's a... Uh, we were discussing it as ambivalence. Ambivalence. Yeah. Big word of the day. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> today we're going to talk about the Pokemon Direct from January, the console wars heating up again, and as always, talk about the games we've been playing recently. Now that we have the we have a bunch of Pokeballs and the episode loaded up in our podcasting cannons, let's hit that transition music. Right, guys, before we get started into the games we currently have loaded up in our console cannons, if you like the stuff we do here on the show, make sure to check out Lamer Gamers Cast on Twitter, at Lamer Gamers Podcast on Instagram, and throw a review down on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. So, Rowdy, what have you been playing lately? All right, man, we break a couple of them out. Uh, uh, the first one, we've actually both been playing, uh, The mm -hmm. Witcher 3. Oh, yeah, Witcher 3, man, you, it's good stuff. How do you feel about this game, man? Um, I, I'm enjoying it. I'm liking it more that I'm playing it. I kind of stopped after a bit, but I'm only like level six. Yeah. So I haven't gotten too far into it, but <laughs> my wife really likes this game. Now, not for the... I have Dolby Atmos, right? And it makes it everything sound really great. The game, I think, is de Atmos enhanced, but it's like the best ambient noise or like thunderstorm music or sound creator. With yeah. Alan. With what? Winds howling. Yes, winds howling. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, so she falls asleep to it. But I've realized I cannot play this game whenever I have people like working on my house or people that I. Yeah, I can't play this game in public. Don't bring this would game you, to play on the Switch. Would you say it has a nudity issue? A little bit. There's some boobs there. <laughs> um, so I was playing, and I've kind of heard that that's in the game, but I was playing, and I didn't realize, like, oh, okay, that's that type of game. So, yeah, I would not suggest playing it in public or in front of your grandma. Um, <laughs> you know, you need to be 18 to play this game. Just saying. Uh, but I, uh, anyway, outside of that, it's really fun. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm really late to the Witcher. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I've played Witcher one and two and just did not like them. Yeah. So it sucked. I never gave Witcher three a chance. That's what um, happened to me. But like, I really liked, uh, the books that I've read so far. I read the first two books. They were really good. Uh, the Witcher series on Netflix. I watched all eight episodes in one sitting. It's on my list. I hear it's good. Oh my god, it's oh my awesome. God. But um, no, the game. Like I've thoroughly enjoyed it. But I'm probably gonna restart it on PS4. Oh yeah, because I got it on Game Pass, and I really liked it. But I really want to play the DLC because mm -hmm. it adds a, a, a lot more to the game. They say like one of the. What is that? I want to say it's the the Blood and Wine DLC. Mm -hmm. it is about half as long as the actual game. Oh, wow. Well. So, yeah, I'm just playing the Game Pass version on the yeah. One X. Looks spectacular. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's going on whenever you're running through the world. I still, the world, I hate to say it's bland. It's very realistic. I'll say that. Like, it feels like I'm running around somewhere in the swamps out here at times, especially <laughs> when you're in the swamps. Uh, so I'm not saying the game looks bad. The skies are amazing, but... There's a lot of games that like take and make the world almost uh, picturesque. And I don't think they're doing it as much in the game, but it does make you feel like you're in a forest. It's just when you're riding around on Roach, which is the name of your horse, by the way. Um, my wife was very unhappy with the fact that the name of the horse was Roach. Well, don't tell her that every horse he's ever had is named Roach. Oh, I don't doubt it. <laughs> but Some of his horses don't live very long. Oh, good to know. <laughs> so, but anyway, so, you know, as you're riding around, you can like just hold A and just kind of ride around and look around, but I'm not as excited just kind of looking around at this world as I am for some other games like Skyrim or, you know, other ones that I... It's also a five-year-old game. But Skyrim's older. 
well. I'm just saying the level design <laughs> uh-huh. is is focused on realism. That's not a bad thing. Yeah. Not a bad thing at all. I'm restarted on PS4 just because the DLC wasn't included on Game Pass. Mm-hmm. And so I went to look at how much the DLC would cost. And it was like 25 30 bucks because it was not on sale. Mm-hmm. And then uh, PlayStation is having a huge sale right now. So I picked up the complete edition of the game for $15. Ooh. And uh, since I have a PS4 Pro, it's going to look better. Nice. All but, right. Uh, what's next, man? Let's see. Well, I actually beat a game. I beat my first game of 2020. I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> now, I've talked about this game on our top games of 2019. It kind of snuck in there at the last second. Children of Morta, man. Children of Morta is good stuff. Um, it's basically a wholesome Diablo. <laughs> it's family Diablo. Diablo for the family. Um, it's almost like a supernatural thing, though, too. If you ever watch Supernatural, the show... You know, it's like this uh, family of people who fight supernatural things. It's kind of like that. You're you're the um, you live on Morta Mountain and you're guardians and stuff. So it's procedurally generated levels, and the family members are all different types of your action RPG tropes, like the gameplay tropes, not necessarily the storyline. But if you want to hear more about it, listen to our top uh, games of. The greatest and lamest games of 2019. Oh, You'll hear a lot more about it. So what's on your what's on your list next? Uh, a, a real quick one. I started playing Quantum Break. I like Quantum Break. Um, right now it's 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 kind of meh, meh for me. Like I haven't really gotten into it, but I'm also only like maybe an hour, hour and a half in. Okay, I'm um, not super far into it, but I think I'm a bit further than that. But it's you can't go into it thinking of, of gameplay first. I think. Yeah. Because this game was really made to be like a multimedia experience. Because yes. it has like the the episodes for a show mm-hmm. in between each mission. Um, I don't know, man. I, I need to pick it up and play some more, but it's going to be one of those that it's going to take a while because I really have other games that I need to beat right now. I can see that. And right now I'm just playing it like uh, with my wife watching because she likes actually the story. The actors that are in it are pretty interesting because they're based off of real actors. Yeah, you have uh, yeah. what's his name? I think it's Aiden Gillian plays the twins as a, one of the dudes from, or he he played Littlefinger in uh, Game of Thrones. I forget the dude's name, but he was Iceman. Yeah, in, Iceman, uh, but in, and his twin are in it. He has a twin. He has a twin or a brother. It, they're but they're, there's two of them in the game. Well, like him and his brother. His is his brother like a Hobbit. Yes. I think. But maybe you haven't gotten that far. Yeah, I haven't Have gotten you? that far. Crap, I'm Thanks. ruining things. I'm ruining things of the game. You right. doo-doo dunderhead. All right, so Rowdy needs to play more of this game. <laughs> so you haven't gotten to the Quantum Break? No, I have. Oh, okay. okay. Like, but there's not really a twin. Like, there's... We'll, we'll talk. I've seen him, like, multiple versions of him, like, past okay. and present. Maybe I'm getting things like, mixed up, but I thought there was. I've never seen a twin... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. What you got? Anything else on your list? Uh, let's see here, man. I'm also doing uh Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. Um, I I initially wasn't gonna play this game because mm-hmm. I was just so mad about uh Battlefront. Mm-hmm. I really love the Battlefront series just because there's so many Star Wars games where you play as a Jedi, and in Battlefront you actually didn't have to play as a Jedi. Like I like the storylines of Star Wars, and there's more to it than just being a Jedi in the Force. Um, and then, you know, EA, EA. Uh, but I actually got this game for fairly cheap. It was on sale and I had like a little bit left over from gift cards and stuff for Christmas. So I went ahead and picked it up and I actually can't put this game down. Nice. It looks really good from what I've seen. I have heard it's a little Sekiro ish. Yeah. And I hate Sekiro. Shadows die twice. Yeah. <laughs> The shadows die a thousand and twice. But you can wear down the enemies you were telling me, right? Yeah, well, I'm also playing on the easiest mode possible. Nice. Yeah. See, the, some of those other games just need an easy slider. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, you could wear them down fairly easy. Um, you, it, it's not as ridiculous as Dark Souls or Sekiro, like trying to watch everything and learn their patterns. I mean, you, you still have to, but... Somebody's um, listening to this show going... 
These games are supposed to be hard. I mean, that's the way you. You know what? This is the lamer gamers. We're just not real gamers. Deal with it. We're lamers. You have fun playing those hard games. Yeah, I don't have time for that. You enjoy slamming your head (laughs) up against the wall three hours in a row. But it, it, there's there's also a lot of uh, platforming aspects to it, like Uncharted, and I love the Uncharted series. Nice. Um, so yeah, think think Sekiro, Uncharted, Metroid Prime, because you have to go to different planets, and then once you unlock an ability, Heck you yeah. go back to a planet and get to a different spot, and then there's lots of ponchos. You know what I really liked about Metroid Prime? What's that? Scanning things. You know what I didn't like about Metroid Prime? What? The lack of ponchos. <laughs> yes this is a concern nintendo you hearing us more Metroid prime ponchos more ponchos we need more ponchos all right so i'm gonna go ahead and move to the next one on my list um my i have a theme here of polish games right now okay so children of morta and witcher 3 well okay witcher 3 cd project red right yeah had some people split off they made 11-bit studios, which made Children of Morta, Moonlighter, and uh, This War of Mine, but also Frostpunk. Frostpunk just got onto Game Pass, and I decided to play it. I haven't played a whole lot. It's really cool. It's basically surround, uh, centered around a giant space heater. Space heater or space eater? Heater. With oh, an okay. H. <laughs> and you make... You know, your world around this giant generator heater thing, because everything's like negative 40 degrees okay. Fahrenheit. You can choose uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit. I like that about this game. <laughs> Don't need none of them Celsius things on my screen, because uh, I have no clue what they mean. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, I was playing that. Uh, and, you know, as you build up your generator, your town, you make smaller generators and things like that, and you expand. Now... It also, like, the main goal of this game is to keep your people happy and to recruit more in. So you actually had to make laws as you're going along, or when something happens, you have to make choices, and you can basically be thrown out. Okay. Yeah. So I've only played it for about an hour. I'm still trying to get a hold of, hang of it, but I saw that they released it on the uh, Game Pass for PC, and that's probably where I'm about to go to because I don't know what it is. Real-time strategy games in my brain don't want to work on a TV. They, well, they don't work with controllers. No, it actually works really well. Have you? Have it's you one of the few games a, that I like with a controller that's a real-time strategy. Have you ever played with a Steam controller? I do not talk about this. I have they're, a Steam controller, Rowdy. They're, they're okay. actually kind of good for RTSs. They are. You are correct. But, but I swear I need a second joystick on this thing. Anything anything else, they're, they're not that good for. No, I've actually rigged up some crazy stuff with the Steam Controller once. They stopped making them. Yeah, I know. They were like, <laughs> we're going to do a fire sale and get rid of all of them for $3. And yeah, then they dude. stopped completely. Um, it's actually a really cool controller. It's a really cool concept. They just have a couple more steps they need to do to make it work. So if, I, I, mm-hmm. I've, I've got a question about Frostpunk. Yes. Is there a punk band that has like ice mohawks? This I have not come across, so I, I'm I'm looking for this. I want to be able to form a punk band because whenever I first saw when I first saw this game, I was thinking it was going to be like Fallout, but in the cold, and you were like punk rockers, and you're going around survival stuff. It's not the game. It's a real <laughs> strategy game. I think it's Frostpunk because it's basically steampunk in the cold. The The first time I heard about Frostpunk, I thought it was going to be like you were a punk band in a van touring Canada or something. Yes. This is, this is exactly what this game is. No, actually, if you're listening, Frostpunk, you are riding around in a van and there are polar bears. <laughs> and you're in Canada, the, the upper parts of Canada, not any of those warm French-speaking parts. <laughs> Cold the, ones. The first time I actually heard about this game was um, some people had bought some, I guess, bootleg codes mm-hmm. off of Amazon and just got screwed over. And uh, what is it? You, uh, 11-bit? Is that what they're called? The yeah. studio? Uh, they found out about it, and anybody who bought it on Amazon, they gave them a free code. Oh, that's nice of them. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty awesome. I mean, just out of pocket, like, gave it to people because they felt bad. So that's that's pretty cool of a studio, man. Yeah, Amazon is – okay, I know I'm kind of keep going on tangents here, but – You can't spell tangent without Travis. Uh, apparently. <laughs> so Amazon is starting to tick me off. I, I, <laughs> I started getting ticked off with Newegg, and you know, I remember our holiday guide. I mentioned, hey, beware of Newegg because they're doing some weird stuff they're bringing in. And first of all, it was sold to China. Uh, to a Chinese company. Called Tencent? I'm <laughs> surprisingly not. <laughs> I'm sure there's somewhere. But they started using a lot of uh, people that ran store that were uh, foreign run. Well, Amazon started to do the same thing mm-hmm. for a lot of products. In fact, you've got to be really careful with reviews because there's, now there's entire review farms Oh yeah. that go through. And you know, you're not sure if a product's really good or not anymore. It used to be a lot different, even like a year ago. And it's just going downhill really fast. I hope they, like, figure this out and fix it because it's getting to the point where I kind of don't want Amazon Prime. You're dumb. I know I'm dumb. It's crazy. (laughs) But I'm getting really annoyed. Like, I just ordered a coffee grinder. And I shouldn't have ordered this coffee grinder. But you have a coffee grinder. No, for hand, for work. Oh, okay. By hand, coffee grinder. And... Like, I <laughs> turn the crank, and it's only held, like, the actual grinding component is held up against metal casing with super glue. Of course, it's got, like, a thousand five-star reviews, <laughs> you know? And it's like, th- how many of these are false? So, you know, I, I, you, they never want you to, like, go in and, like, contact Amazon. They want you to contact this dude that's, like, in an email directly. So oh, yeah. they don't have any issues there and their points. They're... Their reviews versus like how many broken stuff is better. Please contact cool dude six nine four twenty yeah. at yahoo. Contact John who can't speak <laughs> English properly. Oh, oh man. man, yeah, I need to stop. I'm, 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 I'm gonna reel us back in, man. Yeah, reel. The next uh, next game I've been playing. Well, I've actually been playing it for a little while, man, and it's actually gonna be one of the biggest things we talk about on this episode. Ooh. Uh, Pokemon Sword. Sword. Uh, I, I still I still dig it, man. I know I know there's been a lot of controversy behind it. Um, I think it's real fun. Sell me on the sword. I want to get shield. Well, I enjoy this. You should get shield because I have you sword. need the Pokemon. Because <laughs> and I need the shield Pokemans. Mm-hmm. Um, but no. So what? I mean, I guess it, okay. it's, it's like all of the old Pokemon. I mean, it's a paper rock scissors type game. Um, yeah, okay, is it as – because I'm a little afraid it's, like, too linear. Because that's what killed me about Let's Go. Oh, it's very linear. All Pokemon games are very and linear. And I couldn't explore, but I, I see that there's exploration areas So there, there there is an area called the Wild Area. The Wild Area. And you can actually go around and catch wild Pokemon, as you see out there. Um, and a lot of them uh, – ooh, I burped. Gross. Good job. Um <laughs> <laughs> but there, there, there's actually a lot of high level Pokemon out mm-hmm. there, so even if, uh, and, and depending on how many gym badges you have, is how, uh, what level of a wild Pokemon that you can uh, uh, capture. Gotcha. So like right now, I can only catch up to level forty five wild Pokemon, mm-hmm. but I could fight uh, uh, Pokemon higher than that. So that's how I've been getting XP. Gotcha. Uh, so you can farm XP out in these areas, um, but it, there's not like side quests or anything like that. See, I, I just want to go around and find random Pokemon and enjoy pretty things. Yeah, you can But do I that. want the story. I don't mind the linear story, but let's go. I I hated the fact that... You have to I, catch them like Pokemon Go? That, that, oh, man, that drove me crazy. <laughs> that was the biggest problem. But, you know, you... Okay, you would jump down a ledge. Yeah. Then you would have to go around like three towns or something to get back up there. Drove me nuts. That, well, but but the thing was, it wasn't the fact that it was, um, that that's just kind of little exploration areas. It was just like you felt like you're in a corridor the whole time. That was that was part of the game. That's how they. I know that's how it was back when it was two D. They they, it, they yeah. funneled you down the chute to the slaughterhouse that way. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> I don't want to be funneled down the chute to the slaughterhouse. I want to go find free range Pokemon, not these farm Pokemon. Well, there are a lot of free range Pokemon in here. Okay, all right. So, and I know this is gonna be a big part of this episode is talking about what's coming up with the Pokemon, 
So yeah, hey, uh, and I'm, I'm, do you want to go do your next game, and then I'll end on mine. Actually, let's let's, let's do yours because on, okay. on on my last one, I'm going to talk about something we did with it. Okay, that sounds cool. All right, guys, I finally did it. I played Grand Theft Auto V. <laughs> Not for very long. Okay, so I'm going to get heck for this, but um, I just don't care for shooting cops in video games. <laughs> like, I don't really like being the bad guy. I like games where there's at least some good. And I know there's people who like Payday and all these other games, but, man, I just I just can't do it. You know, I played for a little bit, and it's like, oh, you're shooting the cops. It's like, it's a little too much for me. Like, it's a little too realistic in that aspect. I probably need to just go online. Well, I, I'm pretty good at disconnecting from a lot of that stuff, yeah. and I'm not going to get too into it, but a lot of the stuff, or because of the job that I've worked for years, a lot of the stuff in Grand Theft Auto V I've seen firsthand. Yeah. So it can't be worse than what I've actually seen. Yay! Because it's a video game. Yeah. But, but then there was Grand Theft Auto V. There was there's a mission in there, and it's the only mission in a game that ever made me just feel very, very uneasy. And that was the torture scene. Yeah. Uh, uh, when when you when you played this game, did you play as all three of the characters? I kept switching between characters. So a at the beginning, bit. you could switch between two different characters. Yeah, I didn't um, get that far past the beginning, to be honest. Trevor and I forget the other guy's name, who's basically just Ray Liotta. Yeah. Uh, but Trevor is this crazy meth addict dude. Like he's nuts. Um, you a, as him, you have to torture somebody, mm -hmm. like yank out teeth, like yeah, no, smash body parts with a sledgehammer. Like, oh, that that made me feel uneasy. And and I've seen a lot of weird, crazy things that people don't normally see. Yeah. And that made me feel uneasy. So I, I think that's the problem. And I, I think that's just a nature of, one, who I am is I like to be helpful in some aspect. And I can see that as being like, you are, as a paramedic, used to helping people and not causing them harm necessarily. <laughs> you know, it just goes against the nature of who I am. Now, I do, I'm not, I can't say I don't play violent video games. Yeah. It's just not as easy for you to disconnect. Bingo. And that's the thing. And it's also like, I, I got the, um, I have to deal with the, I guess, I don't know if this is the correct way to say it, sociological um, or psychological backlash of having children see this stuff in a game and then yeah. bring it to the real world and then constantly kind of having to almost battle with the ideas that this stuff is being idealized. And that's another thing that gets me on a whole different level that I've talked about before on this podcast. What what you should do, you should look up some videos online of like um, some of the GTA Online stuff that you can do. Yeah. Um, cause there's, there's some pretty cool stuff that you could do in the online version and you don't even have to like, uh, uh, uh play with other people. I mean, there's going to be other people on the server. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's really cool stuff you could do with it. Like, uh, uh, so, so like, let's, let's say you, you do a mission like with some friends or something mm -hmm. like, and you, you set everything up and like, let's say you have to get like a certain kind of car to set up like a heist. Yeah. So let's say you get this car. Well, then there's a countdown to when you get pinged on the map. Mm -hmm. And then when that happens, other players can come and attack you. Yeah. So like, I think that's actually kind of cool. I know that I'm not real into multiplayer online games, but that's kind of cool the way it works. Yeah. I, um, I think it's just the story elements in the missions that are like, kill all the cops. Yeah. yeah just not my, not my bag of <laughs> uh, tea, coffee. Well, I don't know. Just not my thing. Uh, all right. What's so, uh, your uh, last one? My last one, man, is the stretchers. Ooh. It's a game on switch that the first time I saw it, I was like, eh, whatever. Well, then I saw some people play it online. I was like, this is awesome. And I was like, this is an exact one-by-one -one reenactment of what I do for a job. Yes. So, <laughs> the stretchers. You play as two medics, and you have to go to all these different scenes and get and pick everybody that has the dizzies. You yes. have to pick them up, put them in the ambulance all at once, and then get to the hospital by jumping ramps and flipping the ambulance and 
all this crazy stuff, and it totally is totally realistic. It's totally realistic. Yeah, it's um, just too real. But the reason why I wanted to save this for the end is we actually shot some footage of us playing the game with uh, a good friend of ours, Casey. Yeah, um, who helped us film uh, another video we're gonna have coming out soon, uh, and we'll be. Uh, posting our footage or he'll be posting the footage of us playing on his gaming channel which we don't really have a name for yet yeah we'll be sharing it and hosting it off of our youtube page too so you'll be able to find it there whenever it's ready yeah yeah it's uh it's gonna be good man ring fat adventure man oh yeah i've yeah. been I've, I've, I've been looking at some of the the footage that he's edited for it it's mm -hmm. gonna it's gonna be good man yeah, so that'll be another one. Y'all get to see an unboxing of Ring Fit Adventure, see Rowdy play it, oh God. and uh, have a ridiculous, absolutely cheesy and lame skit at the beginning of it. It was it was rough. It's pretty bad. <laughs> Get ready. All right, that's it for. Is that it for your games you played yeah, recently? Man, that's it. All right, guys. After the break, we will get back to news and views, which focuses on Pokemon Direct. <laughs> guys before we get started with some in some news on the pokemon direct i want to give a shout out to our friends over at parallaxmedia.one they're good old gaming school blah 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 i can't speak words today they're a good old school gaming journalism website that has decided to help spread our podcast around to the masses so drop by and check these guys out dude there is a pokemon direct yeah man did it so, fix pokemon uh, i don't think it fixed pokemon but it's definitely a giant leap towards fixing it i actually watched this direct too but i'm gonna let you tell me about it because you actually own the sword okay so let me preface this with i preface. although i am a huge pokemon fan when it comes to actual battles i am only a pokemon novice he's a lamer um basically if i'm fighting anybody and i see them use any kind of buff move where they don't attack me i know that i'm about to die <laughs> that's a good way to put it. <laughs> that that's basically my experience with Pokemon fighting. I really enjoy the stories and playing the games. Magic carp flops. Uh, dude, I catch a magic carp in every single game just so that I can evolve him into Gyarados. Is he in this game? Oh yeah. Okay, just check. I've got one. I've already evolved it. He's already geroded up. Gyarados. Whatever. Get it right. So right. um on on this Pokemon Direct, um, they announced an expansion pass. It's going to be broken down into two DLC packs. Uh, it costs $30 altogether. Um, now, when this was announced, we talked about this a little earlier, but I sent Travis a text message asking if there was a word for being salty and excited at the same time. Because I was a little salty at the beginning because I, I just knew that this Direct was going to be them announcing something where they added Pokemon to the game. Mm -hmm. seeing as there was such a backlash for a lot of the Pokemon not being in the game. So I was a little salty, but as I was watching, I got more and more excited. Um, hey, and didn't they start, though, with a um, a whole different re-release of another game? Uh, Pokemon, Pokemon Dungeon? Pokemon Mystery Dungeon? Yeah, they're going to re-release it and upgrade it. DX. I played the demo for it. It's it's not my cup of tea. Okay. Yeah, it's it's it's... You should definitely play the demo to try it out. It's basically Pokemon uh, like actual RPG, right? No. Oh, I don't know. It's, I've never it's played kind it. Kind of like a very easy dungeon crawler. It's baby's first RPG. Dungeon baby's, first, crawler. baby's first. Baby's first dungeon. Baby's first dungeon. Yeah. CPS should be involved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. But, um, let's see here. So the, the, the first DLC is going to be called the Isle of Armor. I forgot to put the release dates on here, but I think Isle of Armor is going to be released around June. Yeah. It's May, June, somewhere in there. Um, sometime next year. And let's see here. So so on this island, uh, there's a dojo that specializes in very particular training styles. And you and your Pokemon can take on an apprenticeship to train under the Master Dojo uh, to become even stronger. New tutor moves will be included uh, that have never been featured in Pokemon so far, as well as restricted sparring 
where trainers will be limited to what types of Pokemon can be used under set battle conditions. Okay, I kind of like that idea to where it's forcing you to use all 15 million of your Pokemon when you normally only run around with a group of six. Yes, so uh, that's kind of cool because I there has been times when... I wanted to beat a Pokemon game real fast, mm-hmm. so I just used my starter Pokemon, leveled them up mm-hmm. to the point where they could destroy stuff that they're actually supposed to be weak against. Yeah. Like, I would go into a water gym with a main fire type. <laughs> and I know that doesn't <laughs> just mean... destroy it. That doesn't mean much to you, but... Turn the whole place to steam. That's an awful idea. Yeah. Um, water hurts fire. So, it, it's really cool. Unless too. it's an electrical fire. <laughs> Don't do that, kids. Don't throw water on a light socket that's on fire. You'll so it, it'll be bad. It's it's really cool. It, it, it it's kind of teaching you, you know, uh, more ways to work with your Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Just because that's something that I never really do. Like I say, I I, I never use buff moves. I should I should probably learn how to do all probably that. should. I What's mean, a buff been, move? Oh, it's where like you um, it's a move where like you could raise your attack or your defense. Oh, okay. Or so your it's just speed. Not, okay, so an actual move that buffs you. Got yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I thought it was like you flex. No. <laughs> <laughs> you eat some creatine. Uh. <laughs> Pikachu shoots up steroids. <laughs> Gets really angry. But it's Pokeball oh, straight. Man. Oh god, I shouldn't have the joint. Okay, sorry. <laughs> So, your exclusive Pokemon in this one is going to be called Cub Fu. He is a fighting and dark type Pokemon. Um, he's like this little bitty, like, panda bear looking thing. Cub Fu. And he evolves into Urshifu uh, after it has undergone sufficient training. Nice. Urshifu is also a fighting and dark type Pokemon, but it also has two different forms that have varying types. That, this is where I get confused. Does yeah. it just mean they, they have different subset of moves, or are they, like, different Pokemon? I think it's, like, a different stance, so far from what I understand. Okay, because don't they look different? No, it's just a different stance. Okay. At least that's what I've seen in the pictures, because Urshifu looks the same. He's just, like, standing different. Okay. Um, Because there are actually some Pokemon that can switch types, like, in the middle of a match. Gotcha. Um, They could literally, like... Okay, cool, cool. I didn't know they could switch types. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh... This is why Rowdy's talking about this. (laughs) Because I've played Pokemon, but it's been a long time. So these these varying types are the single strike and rapid style... uh, Or rapid strike style forms. Oh, my God. So one punch man and then (laughs) E-Honda. Basically, the single strike form uh, favors battling without holding back with more direct moves that often involve rushing forward in a straight line, while the rapid strike form, on the other hand, uh, maintain a calm demeanor and observe their opponents with flowing movements to parry moves and rapidly strike, as the name suggests. Sekiro. Yes, basically. Um, Let's see, and both different forms have Gigantamax. Oh, I guess they will be different. Can you Pokemon. use a Gigantamax Pokemon, or they're only just there to battle? What do you mean, use them? Okay, so there's Gigantamax Pokemon in the game. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can use you can like use a Gigantamax move or there's there's certain um, there's know. certain battles where you could do Gigantamax. Okay. So like any any gym battle, you could Gigantamax your Pokemon, and in the wild area. Mm-hmm. You can fight Gigantamax Pokemon in certain uh, uh, little, like there's these little red things on the ground that look like honeycombs. Gotcha. And when you go to one of those, you could set up like an online battle where it's you and three other people fight a Gigantamax Pokemon. Um, And if you have a, like all Pokemon can be Gigantamax, Mm -hmm. but only certain Pokemon have a separate Gigantamax form, which will make it more powerful, have more health, stuff like that. Um, which I is wish, cool. I wish they had a different name. I th- Gigantamax is such a dumb sounding name to me. Well, man, you should look at all the like, ridiculous stuff in the past Pokemon games. Oh, I know, I know. That's, that's like par for the course. Mega evolution. But I want something like, like you know something different. Gigantamax <laughs> sounds like a trying to sell a car to me or something. Come oh, down to Gigantamax man. Motors. Yeah, I don't know. Well, so the uh, uh, the second one is going to be called the Crown Tundra. There's not really too much mentioned about this one. It looked cold. Um, I want to say like there's these underground tunnels that you okay. can go in. Yeah, the the direct showed a lot of um, not actual gameplay, but just like concept art. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And then they announced that the unique Pokemon in this one is called Calyrex. Okay. Which makes it sound like a calcified T-Rex, but it's actually a deer. That sounds awesome. <laughs> and it is a psychic and grass type Pokemon. Fancy. Uh, now, these DLCs will add 200 plus Pokemon, including some of my favorites from Gen 1. Heck yeah! <laughs> it's about time. Uh, now, like this like, is where people are ticked off, though, right? Well, like, like, also, like you said in in the direct, like some of the Pokemon that were announced, it was basically just concept art, so we right. don't know which ones are being added. But it's two hundred plus, mm-hmm. um, and but all of the Pokemon that are added can be traded to people who haven't bought the expansion pack, so they can't catch them in the wild, but you can trade with them. So now comes the controversy. Bum bum bum. So people have been griping about this expansion pack, like Nintendo invented DLC. <laughs> and to me, this is so annoying because these are the same type of people that'll buy both versions of the game mm-hmm. and then buy the enhanced version of said game. So a little history on enhanced versions in. 19, let me, let me pull up my timeline here. In 1996, Pokemon Red and Green were released in Japan. Blue in America, not green in America. Um, so then in 98, they released Pokemon Yellow, which is an enhanced version of Pokemon Red and Blue. So basically, they just made it to where you can catch more Pokemon and you had a different starter. Which is kind of lame. It's basically an expansion. Well, that's, that's really not even an expansion. Yeah, you know, I like the concept of expansions because I've been a I, I like PC RPGs, right? Mm-hmm. And so you look at Diablo, you look at um, a lot of your older games. Typically had expansions that would come in, and it was the same base base character, same world, but it was new story, new things, new exactly. enemies, and it felt like a whole different game in so, some aspects. In all these enhanced versions, which there's a lot, like you had Pokemon Gold and Silver, then there was Pokemon Crystal. You had Pokemon Fire Red, Leaf Green. Oh, wait, no, no, that was a remake. Then you had, uh, what is it, Diamond and Pearl. Then you had the enhanced version, Platinum. Then you had uh, Pokemon Black, no, no, Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 were actually sequels. Uh, Let's see, then like Pokemon Sun and Moon, you had Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. These are all enhanced versions. A third and sometimes fourth game in the series. And some of these people complaining about it would buy all of these games for full price. Yeah. Just to play the same game again with different Pokemon and some enhanced features. So what's ridiculous about the complaints is for half the price, you're getting more Pokemon... And you get to go to new areas. So instead of putting out an enhanced version of the game, like everybody thought they were going to do, mm-hmm. they're doing an expansion pass. It's half the price. Yeah, for it, more content. It is. It's thirty bucks. Yeah, for both of these combined. Now, here's my question. Oh, Master Poke Boomer. Okay. Um, <laughs> one. If you buy the expansion. And you have, let's say, Shield. Okay. Do you get both of these? No. Okay, that's where I'm confused. So there is the Sword Expansion Pass and the Shield Expansion okay. Pass. Okay. Oh, no, 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 wait. No, no, no. You do get both the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. That's that's what I'm... Okay, no, no. You do get both of those, but there are se- separate expansion passes for each one. So, like... Okay, gotcha. So you have Pokemon Sword Expansion Pass and Pokemon Shield Expansion Pass. Because in, in these, like... like Sword and Shield, uh, uh, you'll have different gems. Mm-hmm. So, like in, in Pokemon Sword, some of the gems are different than Shield. So, like I went to, oh man, I forget which ones are different. But I want to say like I have a Fighting type gem in Sword, and in Shield, I want to say it's a Ghost type. Ooh. I don't remember. Um, Luigi's but it, Mansion it, gem. It, it, <laughs> it changes. So sometimes there's a different gym leader and there's different Pokemon that you can get okay. each one. So in the expansion pass, it's the same way. Like you're going to have a different rival in each one. Um, 
So that's kind of cool the way that works. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm not gonna get screwed over if I own if I don't own both copies. I get to play both of these expansions. Yes, you do get okay. to play both expansions. It'll so, just be a little different from mm -hmm. Shield to Sword. So we've talked about, and that was an episode we had. Okay, Poke Boomer, to where we were complaining, as was the rest of the world, but not as vociferously. I guess we weren't. Um, <laughs> big words. Big word alerts. <laughs> They're all big words this episode. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we were not as angry at the fact that you couldn't get all the Pokemon. This should be the step that is starting to make these Pokeboomers excited that, hey, I'm finally going to get to have, I finally get to catch them all. And if you look at the new system they made, because there's a Pokemon uh, home thing. Yes. So that's kind of like Pokemon Bank used to yeah. be. And it's basically how you could transfer your Pokemon because there are some people out there who have been able to transfer Pokemon mm -hmm. all the way back from 1998 to now. Yeah. If you do it just right, you can literally, you, some people literally have 20-year-old mm -hmm. Pokemon. I got an old Rattata named Squeaky that's from the 90s. Exactly. Yeah. Um, He's been at my party ever since. Why can I not use Squeaky? So basically, Pokemon Home is just going to be an easier way to keep your Pokemon yeah. because you can now transfer Pokemon from Let's Go or, or from Pokemon Go and Pokemon Let's Go to yeah. Pokemon Sword and Shield. Yeah, and that, that's that's what they need to do. And I can understand that this takes time to do, but I, I'm okay with these expansions. I'm actually, I haven't bought Shield yet, but I'm, I kind of want to get Shield now because I know there's going to be more to it. Yes. And there's going to be reasons for me to use different <laughs> uh, sets of Pokemon mm -hmm. with the way they're exper they're talking about this. And I think they're going to end up having them all on this. Oh, yeah, for sure. Man. Um, like, the, they've only announced 200 plus more, so that puts us over the 600 mark. Yeah. And I want to say there's 890-ish Pokemon right now. Right. So they only have to add, I don't know, 250, 300 more, and then we'll have them all. Mm -hmm. And it's not a hard thing to do, seeing as like the the first expansion is going to come out in June. The next one's going to come out November somewhere. So yeah. they've got plenty of time. Oh, absolutely. Th this is going to be this will be good. All right. Is there what, any... what about Bidoof? That is the question. Do they have Bidoof in there? Bidoof watch twenty twenty. Would they? The <laughs> Badoof Watch 2020. That's awesome. That, <laughs> yes. This is what we need to know. Nintendo, where's my Badoof? <laughs> you, you you sent me the joke the other day. Oh, of, yeah, because uh, uh, there's a... Well, we might we might talk about that joke whenever we're uh, going into the Nintendo Switch Pro <laughs> that's being rumored in the next segment. Do we have any more Pokemon news we need to go over before no, we man. switch over to the console wars? I, I, I have talked about so much Pokemon. Pokemon! Oh, man. All right, guys. So in just a second, after the next quick break, we're going to come back with some console war updates and fake news. All right, guys. Before we start diving into the toxic console wars and the fake news of the week, don't forget that you can tell your friends, family, maybe even your grandma to check us out on Spotify, iTunes, www.lamergamers.com, or wherever you cast your pods. Now, we have just kind of a short, this won't be too long, because we're going uh, next week. We have the gigantic January newscast episode that's hitting. So we're not going to go too far into this and save most of the big news items for next week. Um, but... Let's talk about the biggest gaming Instagram post vid picture ever. Man, this has got you frustrated, man. <laughs> Cannot believe that this was the most liked thing on Instagram. Well, most like well, gaming. gaming thing. <laughs> was the PlayStation 5 logo. Why? So... I find this extremely dumb because this was shown at CES, which is not a show for the gamers. CES is for 
The shareholders. The Consumer Electronics Showcase. Yeah, no, it's for It's the, really not even for the consumers. No, it's for, <laughs> it's it's for, for the, the shareholders. It's for the news media and shareholders. So, yeah. I personally believe that they showed this PS5 logo to look like the PS3 and PS4 logo to oh. make the shareholders be like, yes, more of the same so we can okay. sell. So here's the thing. I don't really have a problem with the logo. Yeah. The logo's not bad. It's a safe design. It's definitely not going to be as confusing as the Xbox Series X and naming. You know, it's going to be easy to buy. Like, you know, tell your mom if you're a kid uh, that you're going, I need the fifth PlayStation, number five. Hold out all your fingers at once. That's the PlayStation I need. Whereas the Xbox Series X, the mom's going to be like, I need the Xbox that's on Series on it. Think it's Apple Xbox? I don't know. There's sound, a one. You sound more like a grandmother I'm than a mother. I'm really old mom. <laughs> All right. So uh, <laughs> anyway, so you know it's not going to be confusing. But the thing that drives me crazy is this is considered the the big news item for PlayStation Five right now. And this is supposed to be this news got way more attention, at least according to Instagram. Yeah than the Xbox Series X did by a margin of millions. I, I think it was just a meme-worthy type incident. Uh, that could be it, Kind of like Because people made when... fun of it. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. I mean, people made fun of the Series X, though. I mean, Exactly. It's, but I think what happened with the Series X was people started thinking about it, and now people are sharing images of how it could be skinned because there's a lot of... Um, Different, yeah, that's right, pig. That's my German Shepherd making noises. But there's a <laughs> lot of different things you could do graphically on an Xbox Series X that people have been sharing. I mean, it was, it's definitely great to make fun of at first, but I think people are like starting to get excited about it. You know, the PlayStation 5, we just don't have any news for it. We know there's going to be a back button that's kind of been insinuated because they released a new back button on the controller for the 4. We've seen dev kits that look like... Um, the Starship um, Enterprise. And a Roomba <laughs> had a baby um, with a shoehorn crab. You know, that <laughs> they don't know who the father is. Uh, anyway, oh, so, you know, that I personally think, I almost feel like this is a way for them to kind of lower people's expectations at this point, that they haven't released anything. Or they're well, trying to make some last-minute decisions. The one thing I have seen about the PS5 so far is that they say that the most exciting features have not been announced yet. Mm -hmm. And then they followed that with what they mean by that are features that uh, differentiates them from Microsoft. Right. So it'll be features that are exclusive to the PS5. Which Probably share stuff. I can't really think of anything that would be too exclusive because everything... Buttons on the back of the controller that are programmable. Well, I mean, Xbox has that. Yeah, it's true with the Elite, way yeah. too expensive controllers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll see, man. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, it's, you know, we're we're I'm kind of waiting to see. Now, I have noticed, though, that um, just kind of a, another tangent... Uh, PlayStation is starting to compete a little bit more with PS Now. Uh, so expect to see that kind of kicking up because Game Pass is... that They seem to be releasing better games. Right? He's giving me a look. Well, uh, Do I every, say the wrong thing, PS Now? No, 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 no. Like, like every, every month I'll... I don't have PS Now, but every month I'll check out the games and kind of compare them to Game Pass. Because don't get me wrong, like, I'm a huge Sony fanboy. Mm -hmm. Like, I love Sony. I'm getting the PS5 for sure, like, yeah. release day. Absolutely. But the PS Now, it has a lot of the same games as the Xbox Game Pass. Mm -hmm. The one main difference is it doesn't have a lot of the exclusives. Right. So whenever I checked on it, I guess it was last week, they had just recently put on... Um, Oh my god, I can't remember the name of it. It's one of my favorite games. Um, <gasps> Horizon Zero Dawn. Gotcha. And Horizon Zero Dawn, that is a system seller right there. Oh, absolutely. Um, I've like I have I've actually seen a tweet of somebody saying that they think that Horizon Zero Dawn is better than Breath of the Wild. I still need to play it, but I say no. It's dude, <laughs> it's an awesome game. Um, it was cool because it was an original IP. Uh, it was a brand new story, and the way that everything is conveyed, dude, it's so awesome. The story's so good. Um, 
It's it, it's an awesome game, but that one's on PS Now. Now that's weird. Now, it's on PS now? now now it's now on now now. Um, but the one thing where uh, another thing that Game Pass differentiates itself from PS Now is uh, all the PS4 games you could download. Anything that's PS3 or PS2 has to be streamed. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I haven't I haven't tried any of it, but you know why would thoughts. you want to try that? You you know my thoughts on streaming. Yeah, so does Google. Apparently, it stopped sending us people because Stadia sucks. Oh my god! Another side tangent. <laughs> there have only been nineteen thousand people playing Destiny Two on Google Stadia. Oh, but you know why I want to point out strictly Destiny Two because it's. It's free. free. You buy Google Stadia, you get to play Destiny 2. 19,000 players. Oof. Uh, it's it's going to go down as one of the biggest flops in recent gaming history, I bet. 19,000 People just aren't players. going to, and it's just not a good launch. We're pretty much going to erase that from discussion in the future, I think, unless they do something major. <laughs> Sorry. Let's All keep right. Going. Oh man. But anyway, so one thing that is going to be different between the two launches, though, Xbox did. I don't have it on my notes. Um, Xbox has said, or Microsoft has said, that there will be no exclusive to that launch. That I think is going to be a little bit of a problem. However, there's a lot of people that I know personally now that are just excited that they can carry over all their Game Pass games to the Series X. So I don't think it's going to be a huge deal. But it's still going to be, you know, people are going to be able to say, it's the only thing with exclusives. That's, that, that's why I'm going to wait. That's why I'm going to wait to get the Xbox Series X. I'm probably going to do it day one and just switch out the One X. I think that's my goal right now. Uh, all right, well, up to Xbox Series X news. And, man, they've had a ton of fake news. Yeah. Like, legit fake news. So, there was a render that showed the back end, the rear end of the Xbox One X. The it's butt. like Series X. Oh, that name's so confusing. They need to change it. <laughs> ah, why can't they stick with cool names like Scarlet or <laughs> Dolphin or some of the cool things they've used in the past? Deathbringer. I don't know if that's really I a think, system. That's what I they should have named the, the Series Google X, Stadia. They, they, they should call the Series X the PlayStation 6. They should. <laughs> Get right ahead of that. <laughs> You know, it would be okay if they, like, did Xbox Series something else. But the fact that they used X drives me freaking bonkers. All right, anyway. So, at a showcase that they had AMD showing and talking about the new chips that they're releasing, they showed the Xbox Series X as one of their big things that are coming out. Well, they used a render, a 3D render of the Xbox One X that they stole from somebody that made a mock-up online. And even on the back, if you look into the render very closely, it says, not for commercial use. So what's funny about that, I actually watched a video by Inside Gaming mm -hmm. talking about that. And they said the name of the website that it was stolen from. Yeah. And I forget yeah. what it was. I think it had something to do with like an octopus or a squid. It's always something name. weird like that. And apparently this website uh, functions by doing renders of things. Yeah. That's, that, oh. that's what they do. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of people that do like things on Reddit too where they like look at my latest UI mock up of this thing or my latest render of this system's like come on. <laughs> All right, next one. Uh there was also some fake news. Oh, by the way, uh before we get to that, the if you see anything, if you're like trying to plan what you're getting for the Xbox 1 right now or Xbox Series Based on any news that's come out for like what's connected to the back of it, like I know it's HDMI most likely. Of course, it's yeah. HDMI. But like if you're expecting it to have anything else to plug in, like USB C or something like that, don't start looking at that yet. No. Okay, it's not ready. That has not been released. All right, next up, uh, the Xbox Series has the largest console processor ever. Fake news. Okay, completely fake. In fact, uh, Digital Foundry used some perspective techniques to figure out the size of the processor and found out it's actually smaller than the One X. Okay. Yeah. 
So, you know, there was this big news that people were saying, oh, it's going to be a powerhouse. You know, it's going to have a freaking fan on it that can make you drive around a swamp like it's on the back of a boat. You know, <laughs> it's got to have it's going to have all this heat. So it's actually smaller than the one X one, which, you know, just letting you know in advance that it's not going to be that large. But, you know, that's the thing. These processors are really not needing to be that large. They, they've got a new, I guess, um, level of processing power and some of the ones that have been released lately that they're shrinking a lot of the stuff and getting a lot of good efficiency out of it. Um, I think that's it for my Xbox Series X news. You know, F Phil Spencer, uh, I think it might have been on Twitter, mm -hmm. like his default icon was the new AMD chip. Ah. It's funny because it says like, I think it says like Microsoft on it and then like in the bottom corner it says 8K. Yeah, and okay. <laughs> so the Series X, they are saying that's going to be AK thinking forward, whatever, and it's going to do 60 frames per second. That's... It's I just thought it was hilarious. And Phil Spencer was like, hey, hey, check this out. <laughs> 8K concho. We're right ahead the gate. <laughs> 8K is not coming for the next five years, at least in a – I mean, it's here. Man, I but found But it's not going to be on everybody's TV for a while. I found a 105-inch 8K TV the other day, man. Jeez, how much was that? $70,000. <sighs> I probably found a – ouch. That's more than two of my car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. That's like a house <laughs> or a little house or, you know, maybe an apartment in California. Dude. All right. So next up is uh, Switch Pro has been rumored by DigiTimes, which is a Taiwanese electronics newspaper that uh, not the most reliable source in the world, but this one keeps being thrown out there by everybody it just keeps getting bigger every time man yeah and it's, so sorry I, oh, no, no, I, was, I was just okay like, it just keeps coming out man yeah and the so rumor. there were some uh analysts a couple weeks ago and i think we reported on it too that said they they expected to be a switch coming a uh, switch pro coming out in 2020 no i did it on twitter and you know i don't think it seems feasible well, now everybody's onto this. And it's oh, yeah. not just from this analyst because it's also being reported by this Taiwanese newspaper that it's already in production. It's supposed to hit in mid-2020. It's going to have a magnesium alloy body, which is different. Not expect I wasn't expecting that. And an update to the CPU. Now the thing the reason is it's supposed to be a it's supposed to keep up with the new generation. Okay, so it's supposed to keep up with the one, uh, the series and the fives, right? Um, it's going to be 4K, uh, and this is, I mean, it's it's not unrealistic. The Xbox Series Five. That's what this new Nintendo should be called. Yes, <laughs> Xbox Series Five. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, uh, here's the thing: there are a lot of new mobile type tablet processors. That are coming out. You're seeing this with Microsoft currently with the Surface line. You, of course, already have this with a lot of the Apple products, which are generally more tablet processors uh, first than they are like full on computer processors. And they can do quite a bit. Like I'm using right now, I got a Surface Pro 7 in my hand, and it's it actually runs faster than my home computer that uses an AMD FX8350. Because um, just the newer generation of processors are really fast. Um, now, the GPU isn't as great because it's yeah. still in a tablet form. But here's the thing. If you do a Switch Pro, you could easily fit some of these newer processors in it and then have some of these stuff that is really needed for this next gen into the CPU to at least scale it down. And really, the, the graphics have been scaled down so much on these systems now. You probably don't need a much beefier GPU, but it's going to be, it's going to come with it, is what it's saying. Dude, does that thing have a USB C on it? What? This? Your, your, yeah, absolutely, man. Dude, you should get an external GPU for that thing. Just just to do it. Just to do it. Just to I'll do it. I'll bring my external <laughs> GPU over see here. See if we can do it. We'll hook it up to your TV. And just see how beefy this thing is. Hey, we could do that. That might be a fun <laughs> test. Um, but anyway, so here is, uh, I'm going to read through this DigiTimes report uh, as far as what's being said. Okay. 
so they reported the Nintendo Switch model will be released in mid-2020 with production beginning at the end of the first quarter, sometime around March. Uh, the Wall Street Journal technology reporter Takashi Mochizuki reported in August that Nintendo has ideas for further updates to the Switch lineup after two models make the platform's life cycle long. So the ones that was just released, you know, the Switch Lite, now they're thinking about this. Um, let's see. Now, there's no concrete information regarding the potential upcoming model, but some are predicting that it's the Switch Pro. Uh, in fact, the uh, Dr. Sir Ken Toto, the CEO of game industry consultancy Canton Games, told GameIndustry.biz, there's no doubt in his mind that Nintendo will launch a Switch Pro in 2020, specifically after the summer holidays to counter the rollout of the PS5 and next-gen Xbox later in the year. He's suggesting a retail price of $399 with 4K support, bigger cartridge sizes, which we have seen recently. There's been a report that they're now doing 64 gigabyte cards. Okay. Um, and, of course, beefed-up components. Now, there are some skeptics. IHS Market Technology Analyst Piers Harden Rolls said that it's eh, probably not going to happen since the launch of the Switch and the Switch Lite uh, have been so popular, so they don't think they need to, essentially. So that was actually from Polygon. Nintendo, of course, has reached out to Polygon and said, we have no plans. Nothing is happening. Shut your face. Yeah. So here's, here's my thing. I think it's possible. For a three ninety nine price point, if that's really what they're thinking, yeah, I think it's possible. I don't know if it's going to be a form factor that is portable, though. Ooh. That's where I'm like a little conflicted. Is it going to be more dockish? Or do you think this could be on the go for 400 I mean, I don't know, man. Like they, You have consoles like the NVIDIA Shield that mm -hmm. can already put out Fairly high resolution. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, the Switch technically can put out 4K. It's in like a spec sheet somewhere, but nothing's done it. Well, and have you have you seen that new um, Alienware Switch ripoff that came out recently? No, dude. Alienware just put out a tablet PC that has controllers on the side of it, like a mm -hmm. Switch, and they're detachable. Nice. I mean, it is a switch. Oh, I did see a picture dude. of that. Yeah. Um, so, so, but how much is that? Is that like an eight hundred dollar thing? Oh, I have no idea. I mean, if it says I, Alienware, I it. they're gonna tack on another three hundred dollars just dude, for fun. I saw it, laughed, and then went to the next video on YouTube. <laughs> I have no interest yeah. in it. So, but, I, I mean, looking back on it, I mean, it's probably possible. Yeah. For it to do, I mean, maybe not four K. Mm-hmm. In portable mode, but definitely up from what we have right now. Gotcha. And so, you know, I'm looking at things like what I've been doing on the Surface. I've been playing games on it. It has a fan in it. I have the i7 model. So, you know, they'll have to have a fan into whatever this new system is, even if they're using new architecture. I just don't know if they can get the price point to where it hit $399 without taking a bite into their profit. And we know Nintendo does not liking t not like taking bites out of their profit when it comes to consoles. Well, the PlayStation Four Pro has uh, a three ninety nine price tag. Yeah, I think I think a Nintendo I think a Nintendo Switch Pro yeah. could do it. Yeah, I, I just I'm a um, little concerned. Is it going to be portable or not? Now, if it is portable, I don't think they're going to go up on the screen at all. I think they're just going to change the internals. The screen might be 1080p. I don't think they're going to care about battery life. But, you know, I wouldn't have a problem with a Switch that just stays at home. Now, hear me out on this. Okay, I'm hearing. What if it's not even a new console? It's just a new, beefier dock. So here's my concern with that. I, I like that concept. Yeah. But... The big because you're thinking of your external GPU, right? Oh yeah. But there's no CPU in it, and the problem yeah. is not the GPU on the Switch; it's the CPU. Okay. That's that's the bottleneck right now, is that with this new gen, they need to have a CPU that can match some of the stuff they're trying to do. So that that's where my concern is, because I think the Switch could actually run some games better if the CPU was a little bit buffed up. 
if that's one of the things holding it back. So beefy, beefy switch. <laughs> so yeah, I, I guess that's where I'm at. I, I'm not sure, and of course, it is a rumor. This is a huge rumor that's floating around. I would love it. I want a 4K switch. I want to see Breath of the Wild in 4K. I just want this. I needs it. Well, I wouldn't go replay Breath of the Wild, but I definitely play Breath of the Wild 2 in 4K. Heck yeah, man. Or whatever the hell they're going to name it. Oh, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition 4K. Yes. Need this. Need this in my life. I need Xenoblade Chronicles X Part 2. Yes. Nintendo, when are you doing that? I need I need mechs in my life. Mm-hmm. But not like the ones from Damon X Machina. Uh, they're cool looking, but they're boring. It, dude, it was such a good concept for that game. It was, but I mean, it's should have been an RPG. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, do you have anything <laughs> else? Because that's the end of the rumors section. No, nah, man. That's going to be it for me. All right, guys. So we still have two podcasts left in this month. Uh, next week is most likely going to be the top five uh, upcoming games of 2020 by Simply Travis and Friends. So we added Rowdy into it, and then we also added in... Uh, some lamers from our Lamer Gamers community on Facebook. Uh, and then we'll have our January newscast, which is, of course, our monthly big episode that is going to be probably two hours long. And oh, yeah. Just, Easy. Uh, there's been so much news in January. We tried to get some of it out of the way in this episode. Uh, so <laughs> just get ready for it. Had to talk about the Pokemans. Yep. All right, guys, uh, make sure to, if you're watching this on YouTube, like it, subscribe to us on whatever you're on, uh, share it with a friend. and uh, YouTube really likes it when you say that in your videos. Yeah. Smash like, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smash that like button and ring that bell. Yeah, because it doesn't really matter anyway. Then go into you your say. settings and make sure you turn your notifications on. Oh, gosh. All right, guys, that is it for me. Y'all have a good one. Rowdy, you got anything else? Nope, that's it, man. We are out.